Good evening. On behalf of Housing and Dining Services, we are excited to welcome you to the Room Selection webinar for the fall 2022 semester. I, we have a lot to cover this evening, so I'm going to jump right in and give you an overview of what we are going to cover this evening. So we're going to start with introductions. I'm going to introduce myself further and introduce my colleague who's going to be speaking and on camera during the webinar this evening. And then we're going to review several different things. So we're first going to go over the housing contract process and then look at our available meal plans as well as dining dollars. We'll look at some tools to help you explore the cost of living in various rooms and to explore and come up with a list of your top housing options and then provide you with a little bit of additional housing information as we go um, through the presentation. We'll then transition into a discussion about roommates and using room sync and then my colleague will take over and do a room selection live demo for you. And then we will transition into talking about some tips and things to think about as we go through the summer and approach August. And we'll conclude with, every, with whatever time we have remaining with a live question and answer session. Before I get started and jump into the content though, I want to remind you of a couple of things. So we have, though we have the live Q&A at the end of the presentation, we want you to submit any questions that you have using the Q&A feature. The chat feature is not, does not work um, during the webinar, so you'll want to submit any questions that you have through that Q&A feature. And if you're joining us on, on Facebook live, then you can just comment on the video and we'll be sure to answer your questions that way. We have a team of housing and dining services experts who are going to be behind the scenes answering those questions for you. And if we have any remaining at the end or any that we want to have answered live, we'll address those during that Q&A session at the end. Also to note, the webinar is being recorded and we will post it to the Housing and Dining Services website following the webinar this evening. We will email you a link so anyone who's participating, you can see, uh, you'll be able to access that link and as well as, um, so if you're not able to stay on for the whole evening, you can jump on later and watch the rest of the webinar and um, access all the good information that we're gonna be providing you this evening. So, as an intro to introduce myself, uh, my name is Whitney Penn. I am the Assistant Director of Academic and Student Programs here with Housing and Dining Services. And what that means is I work in helping with incoming students and their families to answer questions at events and um, coordinate essentially anything to help you transition to your time on campus here in housing. And then my colleague Stephanie Warner is our residence hall occupancy coordinator. She's going to be doing the live demo portion of this evening. She's up there. Um, and so then we have uh, also once she speaks and does a live demo, I will hop back on and do a couple of concluding um, pieces of information for you to know, and then we'll open it up for that, that live Q&A portion. I want to mention for those of you who don't know, or to reiterate for those of you who may know, this fall 2022 semester um, will begin the first year residency requirement, which requires first year students to live on campus their first two semesters on the Manhattan campus here. If you are a student who may want to apply for an exemption, we do offer that as uh, we do offer exemptions uh, based on 10 different categories. And the best way to get information about what exemptions we offer is to go to our housing and dining services website there. Um, and on the main page, there's a link on the navigation on the left hand side for first year residency. You can navigate to that and it will provide you information about what those exemption categories are as well as links to the forms to apply for those exemptions. It's important to know that if you've worked with any other program or department on campus and talked about and applying for an exemption that housing and dining services is going to be the sole source of approving those exemptions. So 
if you have not submitted a request through us and seen an approval through us, then you're going to need to submit that if that's something if you're interested in pursuing uh, an exemption to that residency requirement. If you have not yet done your housing contract or submitted an exemption for the residency requirement, you're going to want to do that before you submit your housing contract. All right, so moving forward, um, I'm going to share a little bit more about what the housing contract process looks like overall for K-State. And this is going to be maybe providing some information for students who have not yet done the housing contract and giving you a little bit more information if you have already completed that housing contract. So anything that you're going to do related to housing and dining, you're going to do through your resident portal and you access that by going to our website. So that housing.k-state.edu, which is both at the top um, left there side of your screen there, as well as in the bottom right side, um, and it will be on every single slide as we advance forward, so you can access that at any time. If you have not yet been admitted to the university, you won't be able to access your resident portal, and you have to have a verified K-State EID, which means you've set up your username and password in order to access the resident portal. So the first step, probably the vast majority of you, of you have completed at this, this point, and that is to submit your housing contract as well as the $230 down payment, of which is $200 towards the initial payment, which is refundable until June 1st, as well as a $30 processing fee, which is non-refundable. It did the housing contract open for the fall 2022 semester on December 7th at 3 p.m. And so if you have questions at this point and haven't done a housing contract but have concerns about that initial down payment, please reach out to our office for assistance and we can work with you individually. In the housing contract, and I will get more into this in a little bit later in the presentation, but is that's going to be a space for you to mark if you have any interest in joining a residential cat community, the Smurthwaite Scholarship and Leadership House, or the Honors House. Step two of the housing contract process is what the step that you all are in right now, and that is exploring your options. We, it's very good to have several backup plans for what room and building space that you're going to select through the room selection process. We suggest at minimum that you have three very different room selection options lined up so that would be three different buildings and three different room styles especially if you have confirmed roommates and recommend that you have at least five of them because it may be helpful when it comes time to select your space if one of those spaces is not available you want to be prepared and ready to be able to select that space and have those options available for you and the final step of the housing contract process is what we're going to be showcasing during the live demo tonight, and that's the choose your experience or the actual room selection piece of the process, which will be happening starting in the middle of this month for some students, and then will happen for the remain all other students starting at the beginning of May and happen throughout the whole month. So your room selection time is based on the date and time that you completed your housing contract and submitted payment. I'll go into more what that's going to look like here in a moment. And just know that students who par are participating in a residential CAT community, I did mention that earlier, you will receive priority in the housing selection process. And I will share with you what date that is and how to see that as we move forward. You are able to make any changes to your housing contract if you've submitted it at this point in time. To do so, you go through your resident portal, so using your K-State EID and password that you created, and then you click on edit contract. The things that are listed on this slide is everything that you're able to edit right now um, within that housing contract. So you can add dining dollars, which I will also give you a little bit more information about. Various things that you can change with your housing options include break housing. So if you accidentally selected or changed your mind about selecting 
being here over the fall break, you can go in there and take that off, or you can add any break housing that you might be interested in. You can also indicate those specialty housing options that you might be interested in. Um, for example, maybe now that you've heard a little bit more about these options, you can go in there and select them. So that would be uh, selecting Smurthwaite, the Honors House, and the residential cat communities. You can also adjust your meal plan. And then you can also add or change your preferred roommate or roommates, as well as update or um, your choose your experience profile. And the final thing that you are able to adjust is the information disclosure piece. So if you identified an individual or individuals within your account who we could disclose information about regarding your housing, you can either go in there and change who those individuals are, take them off, or if you want to add any any individuals on, you're welcome to do so. It's really important to know that making changing changes in your housing contract is not doesn't impact in any way the original date and time that you submitted your contract. So therefore your room selection date and time will not be impacted. So feel free to go in there and make changes um, as much as you would like up to this point um, and know that your room selection date and time are going to stay the same. All right, so the various meal, the two meal plans rather that we offer, I wanted to highlight them here in case again you want to make any changes or if you're a student who needs to complete the housing process, you will need to select which meal plans um, you would like to choose. So we offer the two options. The first is the all access, which gives you unlimited meals, in person meals, as well as five on the go meals per week. It also gives you five guest passes and an additional benefit of receiving a 5% discount at any housing and dining services retail locations, so things like our coffee shops, et cetera, that are run by our staff. And you can see the cost there at the bottom. We also offer the any 14 meal plan, which allows you to combine any uh, 14 either in person or on the go meals each week and gives you two guest passes per semester. And again, you can see the bottom um, on the bottom right there uh, what cost it is for that any 14 meal plan. The meal plans reset every Friday at 11.59 p.m. and they do not roll over into the next week. So for example, if you only use 12 of your 14 meal plan meals in one week, those additional two meals will not roll over the next week once, uh, once they reset on Friday. We do offer an optional supplemental dining dollars plan that goes in addition to your all access and any 14 meal plans. As students who will be living in the residence hall, you're required to choose either the all access or any 14, but you can supplement that with the dining dollars if you're interested in doing so. And if you add that to your account, that will be added to your K-State ID, which you can then use at any of our housing and dining services retail locations and any of the participating restaurants in the student union. So it's a great option to be able to buy meals outside of the residence halls if you are visiting one of those locations. So I talked a little bit about how we wanted to show you the cost to help you come up with your options for where you would like to live on campus. This is the cost comparison guide that we have that we distribute to students and families at events. So many of you may have this already if you came to one of those in person events. It is small. So the important thing to pull out of this is that you within this on the, the left side image there that is uh, that shows step one, it shows you that there are different costs per semester, depending on the room type and the building that you'll be living in. And then on the right hand side, which is the back side of that handout, uh, step two and step three show the meal plan options and allow you to kind of write out and calculate what the room type that you're interested in looking at is going to cost as well as the meal plan and then total it for the semester. Since this is a 
paper handout that we give students. One of our best tools to use is the Explore Your Options tool, which is av available on our website because this allows you to digitally compare various residence halls to each other based on the cost of the particular room style that you're interested in looking at for that hall, as well as a meal plan that you may be interested in looking at. So for example, if we look at that first column, um, the living type on the left-hand side there, you will select residence hall because you're looking at a residence hall as and the living experience is the type of room that you're looking for so the traditional is uh, the room with a community bathroom the second option there traditional private is your room with um, a community bathroom but the community bathroom has pods so it's a bank of sinks and then individual private restrooms with a shower and a toilet that you can lock and have your own privacy, and then the suite option there. Then you can identify what building you're looking for, the community that that building is located in, so whether that's the Derby or the Kramer community, and the room type. So for example, in that first column, you have the traditional double room, so that's gonna be a two-person traditional room that you're looking for. And then you can see what that housing will cost for the semester and you can add on either the any 14 or the all access meal plan and see the total for the academic year and what that will look like and then you can compare ver the various residence halls and room types that you're interested in looking at and what the cost of them plus the meal plan will be for the semester you can then email a pdf version of that to yourself so that you have it for reference and again this is a great tool to be able to help you build that list of options moving into room selection so that you know which what the cost of your the space is going to be and what all of your options are going to be moving down the road I want to mention, as I introduced before, the two scholarship houses that we have on campus. The first is the Smurthwaite Scholarship and Leadership House. This is uh, about a 45 resident, all female cooperative living community. It does require an additional application and interview in order to live in that space. And while the, the final deadline for the fall semester has actually passed, we do encourage you that if Smurthwaite is something that you might be interested in living in. Go ahead and scan that QR code. It's going to take you to the application and you can still apply. And if there are, is space available, you may be able to live in that community. The Honors House is our other scholarship house, and it is about 45 residents as well. It's a co-ed community for students who participate in the University Honors Program. It also requires an additional application, so you can scan that QR, QR code. It will take you directly to the application, and you can um, apply to live in that space. It, if you do apply, you're going to also need to apply to the University Honors Program if you haven't already done that. An important thing to know about our scholarship houses is that room selection is not available for either of these spaces in the residence resident portal because it's a manual placement process. So if you've applied to one of those spaces, you won't actually go into the resident portal to select that you will work with that community to assign a space for you as we move into the summer. Some additional room selection details that are important for you to know, as I mentioned before, um, your room selection date and time are based off of when you submitted your contract and payment, and that date and time is now available in your resident portal. So we did send out an email last week that announced that, but if you haven't seen that yet, we, I would suggest that you go into your resident portal so you can see that time, and Stephanie is going to show you how to see that in your resident portal so you get an idea of what that looks like. And as I mentioned before, residential cat community students begin selecting their rooms early and that's going to start as early as this Friday, April 15th. All other students will begin selecting as early as Monday, May 2nd. And as I mentioned, the time in which you time and date that are assigned to you are based off when you submitted that contract and the time slots are scheduled to begin every 15 minutes starting at 3 p.m and going until 5 p.m during the weekdays if you're familiar with the k-state campus 
The strong community does remain closed for the upcoming year. So that includes Boyd, Putnam, and Van Zyl halls, as well as the Van Zyl Dining Center. So that won't be an option for you as a community and room um, to select for the upcoming year. A really important thing that we get a lot of questions about is how students can connect with roommates. So there are essentially three ways in which you could be paired with a roommate or roommates. The first is the potluck or random style. So there are two ways in which this could happen. First, you could choose an open space with somebody who is already in that room, or you can choose an empty room and another student or students select the other space or spaces that are available in that room. And then there's the preferred or confirmed roommate process. So if you already know who you want to live with, Everyone who's interested in living together enters your roommate information into your resident portal and you confirm each other as roommates. That's an important piece. So you need to make sure that if there is, a, you know someone that you want to room with and you enter their information into the resident portal that they are also entering your information into the resident portal so that you can be placed into a room with them. And then while the last option may happen a lot less frequently, we do often relocate people. So if you, for example, started with a room and you're just on your own, but you haven't bought out that room, then you may be assigned a roommate as we're moving students around, potentially at the beginning of the semester or as we have students come in throughout the year. So that you may end up with a roommate through that process as well. We do understand that living with roommates takes some adjusting and involves often a lot of communication. So we work with students to create roommate agreements at the beginning of the semester, or more specifically the RAs do. Um, but it's really a unique opportunity for you to learn and develop shared experiences and friendships with others. It is important not to only rely on social media sites for information about potential roommates that you're interested in because that may not show the best picture of who that person is as a roommate for you. Therefore, we suggest that you use RoomSync. And so that's a tool available for you through your resident portal. The first time that you access RoomSync, you're gonna to need to go through that resident portal in order to uh, show essentially that you're connected with K-State. And then you're gonna answer information and create your, a profile for yourself, which will ask you questions like, what are your study habits? Um, what are your sleep habits? Things like that so that you can pair up with a potential roommate and confirm that through the resident portal if you find someone that you think would be a great fit for you. Know that RoomSync is available as an app in the App Store or Google Play, but most of you will probably access it through the resident portal. So now that I've talked about roommates, we're gonna transition to Stephanie and she's gonna go through some scenarios to help you understand what those different roommate assignments look like as well as the live portion of the uh, room selection demo. All right, thanks Whitney. Um, so we're gonna go through three um, different scenarios and uh, there's been a lot of questions coming into the Q&A um, that will be answered during these scenarios. So um, this is going to be good for you to get more in-depth answers and kind of see how the process is going to look um, for, you know, the different scenarios that you're going to be um, going moving forward with. So the first one is going to be looking at if I'm looking for a random roommate, like I have not found a roommate to pair with yet and I'm going into the room selection process by myself but I do not want a single room um, or I don't wanna pay for a single room. Um, and then I'm also gonna show you how to change your room selection um, after you've already selected a room. Um, and then in the second scenario, it will be that I have preferred or confirmed roommates. So I found my roommates prior to room selection and I've entered their WID or Wildcat ID numbers onto my contract and they have on top theirs. Um, and then I'm also gonna go through troubleshooting errors that may come up when um, you're going into the room selection process. So you can either um, fix that um, right away or um, even prevent it prior to room selection happening. 
Um, and then scenario three will be, I am a student that is looking for a single room option. And so I want to have my own room. And then I'm also in a cat community. And so there are different intricacies that come along with being in a cat community. And that's why those students um, select early in the room selection because they have different, um, they have different uh, specific places they have to be within the residence hall environment for that, um, that residential um, cat community. Um, so let's just get started. So the first thing is, um, if you have not already, like Whitney said, um, if you have not already looked to where your room selection time is, um, you can sign on to your resident portal and under your contract for this year, it'll say select your room from and then a date and a time. Um, and that is the starting date and time. So that's when you will gain access to the system. Um, and so that's the earliest possible time that that, um, that, that will give you access to it. You will have access from that date and time all the way until, um, all the way through July 1st. Um, so you can select your room anytime during that time period, or you can change your room anytime during that time period. Um, so you don't, you know, when we talked about the 15 minute time slot, it's not that you have to pick your room in 15 minutes, it's just that's when the most available options will be for you because less people are in the system until the next time slot. Um, so uh, it, when it becomes that time, um, then um, it will turn into a link. The highlighted green select your room text will then turn into a link at that time. Um, so then you'll click that link and um, I am gonna share my screen now and show you the live portion of this. All right, so this is my resident portal um, and this is the front page. So I have gotten to the time where it is time for me to select my room. Um, and so this is now a link before it did say that, you know, I would be able to select my room starting at 7 p.m. today. Um, so I will select that link. Oh, it's been sitting here too long. Um, and then you're gonna three, see three different room styles pop up on your screen. And this is how you will filter through the system. So we have traditional rooms, which is our community style bathrooms, which are divided by toilet stalls and um, shower stalls. So all the shower stalls do have a privacy curtain as well as a shower curtain. And so there's like a little changing area between. Um, and all of those bathrooms are cleaned by our housekeeping staff. Um, and so you'll see the majority of our rooms are traditional rooms, and that's the traditional residence hall that you, you know, would imagine. Um, and then we have the traditional private, which is our upgraded bathrooms um, that are in Weefault Hall and West Hall. Um, and those are more of a private bathroom where um, they're in pods, where there's four to five bathrooms per wing um, that you share. And they're just like the bathroom that you have at home where you shut and lock the door behind you. And so you have a toilet, a sink, and a shower, and then you shut and lock the door behind you. Um, and so you would never use the bathroom, that bathroom at the same time as someone, but you would before and after them. Um, and those are also cleaned by our housekeeping staff, which is really great. Um, and then our suite style rooms are the rooms that have a bathroom that is private to that suite. Um, and so the students that are assigned to that room are the only students that have access to that bathroom. Um, and so that's another option for students that are looking for that. Um, students in the suite style rooms do clean their own bathroom. Um, during the winter break, our housekeeping staff will go through and do a clean um, halfway through the uh, school year for them. Um, so right now for this scenario, I'm coming in and I don't have a room I picked out. And so I'm going to kind of go through and see what's available. So I'm looking for a traditional double room because I want the lowest cost room. Um, and so I'm going to click on that and then it's going to show me which halls have availability for that. Since I'm by myself, I don't have a roommate or anything. It's going to show me any room that has one opening in it or more. Um, so I think I want to live in Marlat Hall. And so it's gonna show me all the rooms um, that are available. And you'll see that there's a red X 
on a few of these. So that means that there's one occupant already assigned to that room. Um, so I'm gonna go down here and I like the, I, I think the sixth floor would be good. So go to 616 and, oh, Whitney is the other person in that room. <laughs> so imagine that. <laughs> um, Sorry about that. One second. <laughs> An alarm going off at my house. <laughs> um, okay, sorry. Uh, back to sharing my screen. Okay, so I want to be roommates with Whitney. And um, so you'll see here that the room cost will be listed as well as the two different meal plan options. So if you've selected an all access meal plan, you can always change at this time, or you can keep it the same. You can add dining dollars at this time if you'd like. Um, you can add dining dollars at any time. Um, you can click through and see the different meal plans if you want more information on those. Um, one of the big things is to go down here and you can see the map of the green means that that room is available to you. Red means that that room is either the opposite gender or the opposite sex of you, or it is um, already occupied or full. Um, so like two residents have already selected 615 um, per se. So you can kind of see where on the floor plan that is. So that looks like a good space. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna say, okay, and confirm that. All right, so then it's gonna come up here and it's gonna tell me the breakdown of everything. This is my roommate. This is their phone number and email address and where they're from. And so we encourage you to introduce yourself to that roommate um, when you get assigned there. Um, so then I'm gonna come back here. And if at any time you forget what you chose or you wanna see, you know, look up your roommate's information or anything like that, you would come back to this main page and go to assignment info and you'd be able to see um, Whitney's information as well as what room and meal plan you've chosen. And so now I've decided, oh, I'm, I actually wanna live on the other side of campus. I wanna live in Moore Hall because it's gonna be closer to my classes now that I've learned a little bit more about it. And so I'd like to change my room. Whenever it <laughs> goes on. Let's see. So I am gonna change my room and you can change your room at any time throughout the summer. Like I said, um, any time from when your room selection time is all the way through July 1st. So to do that, you would click select your room. And then you would come down here to change room. And then it's gonna bring you back through the system. So I'm gonna go back. I want a traditional room still. Um, I'm gonna go back to the traditional double but this time I wanna to go to Moore Hall. So I'm gonna to come to Moore Hall. And then I would like to view 945 and confirm that there is no, there are currently no residents that are in this room. So what will happen then is once I select this room, then any student can see my information on there. So my name, my age, my major and smoking preferences. And so you'd be able to see all of those pieces or somebody else would be able to see that and be able to pick your room to be roommates with you. Um, and so now I can see, oh, I'm at the end of the hallway. Oh, I'm not sure that I like that. And so I'm gonna go back and I think I like this 940 or 939 better. And so you can always go back and it'll default to bringing you back to the um, page that you selected. And so you just come back here, change room, Go to traditional double. And so you can go through and search all of these and see. Um, so I'm gonna actually reserve 940 because that's available. And then I will click reserve room and meal plan. And it's gonna change my room assignment. Um, and every time that you change uh, or you get assigned to a room or change your room assignment, then um, it's going to send you a confirmation email um, saying that you're assigned to the room. Um, and that can take about 10 minutes to come through sometimes. Um, 
And so, like I said, there's no roommate assigned at this time, but um, if one did get assigned, then it would show up here. Um, and like Whitney had said, at any time during the year, um, we can assign you a roommate. Um, we have a room transfer process once rooms are occupied. We also have residents that join us later on in the school year. Um, and so even if you are not assigned a roommate um, prior to occupancy, um, you still have to have that space open if you are paying the standard double rate. Um, if you want to have your own room, then you would want to look for the single room option. Um, so I am going to sign in to a different account to show you the next scenario. And this is going to be going through the confirmed roommates. And so if you are a group of roommates or you just have one confirmed roommate, I want to listen in on this a bit. And so hopefully if you have found roommates either through RoomSync or through other ways like you know people, um, then you will um, have put their Wildcat ID numbers on your contract. Um, and they have put their Wildcat ID number or your Wildcat ID number on their contract. Um, so um, this is a different test account that I'm gonna utilize for this scenario. And so I'm gonna come back again, select your room. It's my room time. This is the troubleshooting errors. So I came in and I have two roommates that I wanna select with. Well, HDS test two male, which we're just gonna call HT2, <laughs> um, that person um, has not completed their contract. So it's showing as an error. So they may be confirmed with you, like they added you to their contract, but they have not completed the contract. And that's why that error is showing. That will also show um, on your contract if they have not completed their contract. And I'll show you where that will look. So you can check now um, so you don't get this error when you're selecting your room. And then Alex is unconfirmed. So he has completed his contract, but he has not added me to his contract. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the homepage and behind the scenes, my um, colleague is going to add me to his contract. And while um, she's doing that, I'm just gonna tell you that if at any time you need to edit your contract, when you went over this, but you can edit your contract here, edit contract slash dining dollars. Um, you can also view your contract terms and conditions at any time or your assignment info. On April 25th, there will be a room inventory button that will go live. This will show you in real time what is available, <laughs> which can be amazing and also, <laughs> Um, addicting, I don't know. <laughs> um, so you'll be able to see what's available right before your room. So I always let students and parents go, just wait until, I know it's hard, but wait until right before your room selection time because it does change a lot. Um, unfortunately, that is not available for CAC community students, that room inventory button, because there are so many intricacies and spe specific locations that those students need to be assigned. Um, so that would be for general room selection that that is available. So I'm gonna go back to select your room. Oh, look at this. Now I am confirmed um, with both Alex and um, test or HT2. Um, let me go back because I wanted to also show you, or Kathy, can you, can you unconfirm? Cause I wanna be able to update a roommate. So we were a little bit ahead there. So I only wanna be confirmed with Alex at this point. I didn't want this guy to have a contract yet because I wanna show you what happens when you select a room and then you confirm a roommate later because that gets to be a little more um, complex and there's a few more steps to that. HDS test one is off Alex. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, so then we are gonna go through and select a suite and I'm gonna talk through what that looks like. So we're looking for a two by two, okay? Um, and since there's only two of us right now, it's showing that only Alex is gonna be, um, only Alex is gonna, or I mean, sorry, only HT2 is gonna be included in this reservation. Alex is not confirmed. So I'm gonna have to talk to him about this later. Um, and so I'll go in and say, oh, we wanna be on the second floor. So when you select this room, 
it has two room numbers, but you're selecting the entire suite. So, but that is only if you have multiple roommates. So since I only have one confirmed roommate, I'm only selecting one side of the suite. The other side is gonna be available for someone else to select. So what I'll wanna do is I'll wanna reserve that room. And if, you know, depending on which, um, which uh, order your roommates are listed in, that's how they're gonna be assigned. And so since um, HT2 is my, um, number one roommate confirmation, um, then they're going to be listed as my immediate roommate. And then I'm going to have two suite mates on the other side. And so, um, since, so then Kathy, can you now confirm Alex, please? And then I'll show you like, let's say, okay, now I called Alex and I said, okay, now I need you to confirm me so that I can add you to this room because you wanna do it quickly because you don't wanna lose the other space because although you're clicking on an entire suite, you're only reserving the number of spaces that are confirmed to you. So then I would click update reservation once that was confirmed. Let's see if we got through it. Nope, not yet. Um, another thing to note is that um, when in the summer, um, what we're going to do is uh, anybody that has selected a two by two, because the system will um, throw you into the two, um, it will throw you into the two different rooms. Um, we will send an email to anybody that is assigned to a two by two to confirm that the right roommates are in the right room. Um, and so just so you know, we will confirm with you in July. Um, but if that's something that you will have a question about, you can definitely email us prior to that. But we will confirm that prior to um, prior to occupancy. Okay. Well, <laughs> maybe I'll I'll go in and add it myself. <laughs> um, all right, ask again, Steph. Oh, um, I needed um, Alex to be confirmed now. He is. With okay. HDS test one mail. Yeah. Yeah, he is. Okay, thank you. Okay, so now I'm gonna do update reservation. Still not. Um, so I don't know what's going on with that. This is what happens when you're live. <laughs> uh, um, okay, so theoretically, what should happen is you wanted sure. HDS test one to be confirmed with Alex, correct? Yes. Okay, that's what I did. I'll I'll take it off and redo it and see if that will help. Well, we're gonna move forward because I don't want to. Um, go through too much time. But once Alex is confirmed, then you're gonna update the reservation and it should pull them into the suite. Um, and it'll pull them into the other side because he wasn't the first roommate there. Uh, okay, try it. I did it again, hopefully. It's... Okay, I'm trying one more time and then we're just gonna go. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know what's going on. Okay, well, we'll go back. If you're ever having any issues, feel free to email or call us and we will <laughs> look into it. Um, but that that was just working because I tested it. So, um, all right. So that was that scenario where we need to troubleshoot errors as we're seeing them when we're coming in um, and selecting a suite. Uh, so I'm going to do one more scenario where I'm going to select with a um, as a cat community resident, uh, and I'm going to sign into a different account here. So we have a fresh view. All right, so now I'm signed in as a female in a cat community. I'm gonna share my screen. So this is another test account that we have. 
So I will just click the select my room. So now you can see that I am assigned to a CAC community. So I have preference a CAC community on my contract. I've been contacted through K-State first um, and they have sent me the classes and I've, you know, I've um, uh, decided that that is what I want to do. And so I've been added to that CAC community, um, which has specific specifications on where you can live. Uh, so for hope and resilience through fandom, um, that is going to be in the Derby community. And so when you go through to select the rooms, it will not show anything in the Kramer side of campus. And this is true for um, every CAT community has different specifications for it. And so it does get a little bit complex. So if I'm looking for a traditional double room, my choices are Moore Hall or Haneker Hall. Um, but at this point in time, I'm looking for a single room. I wanna be by myself. And I really like the option of that traditional private bathroom. Um, so I am gonna click on that. And then I'm gonna to go to traditional private double a single. This room type is only available in West Hall. Um, and I'm gonna click through that and see these are the options that I have right now. So you see here that it says wing co-ed. So that means that this room 219 is on a co-ed wing. Um, the only time that we would have um, students of opposite sex using the same bathroom is in the traditional private environment. So West Hall has one floor that has two co-ed wings, which is the second floor. And then Weefald Hall has one wing on every floor that is co-ed. It will always designate as wing co-ed on the room if you are choosing a room on a co-ed wing. Um, so you can decide if, if it's blank, that means that it is the same um, sex as you. And so for me, I identify as female and so in this scenario, and so um, there is nothing there that means it's a female wing. Um, the traditional private bathrooms are just like your bathroom at home where you know you shut and lock the door behind you. And so it's just like having a sibling of the opposite sex um, where your brother or sister might be using the bathroom before or after you. Um, so that's kind of how that co-ed environment works. With the suite style rooms, those are always gonna be co-ed other than Ford Hall because um, you're sharing or you're only sharing a bathroom with those in your room. And so you may live next door to someone of the opposite sex, but you wouldn't share the same bathroom as them. Um, and so in all, re in all of this, um, all of the community style traditional rooms are gonna be gendered by wing. And so split for the bathrooms, whereas there will be an option for the um, co-ed um, for traditional private and then so I'm gonna go ahead and select a co-ed wing and I'm gonna do the double as single. So you'll see the room cost is there um, and the I can keep my meal plan there and reserve my room and meal plan. Uh, one of the other things about CAC communities is that it is very specific um, and, and intricate with the programming of the CAC communities. So you're not able to, um, uh, you're not able to uh, do, you're not able to, sorry. <laughs> um, you're not able to see the floor plan like you were for the other ones um, because there's so many specifications with it. And so you will um, go in and if you have questions about where the room is located for the CAC community, feel free to email or call us and we're happy to provide that. Um, and that's why we do the CAC community room selection, like I said, a little bit earlier in the time period. And so we have a little bit of time before the normal room selection to get those students settled. And now I'm going to pass it back over to Whitney. All right, so following that live uh, room selection demo, we wanted to remind you of some important information and give you some tips as we move uh, past room selection and into the summer. So one important thing is that you should begin checking your K-State email regularly as we go and move through the summer. We will start communicating information about move in and things like that from Housing and Dining Services. So check your email so that you see those communications come through. That's for Housing and Dining, but also for other departments and programs at the university as well. 
as mentioned before, but just to remind you that if you need to cancel your housing contract, you will do that in your resident portal until uh, up until June 1st. If you cancel prior to June 1st, you will receive the $200 initial payment refunded to you. Any cancellations after June 1st will incur a $200 cancellation fee, which will result in you not being able to be refunded for that contract. So if you're going to cancel, please make sure that you do that before June 1st. You can also change your room selection in the resident portal until July 1st. You can also go in there and, as I mentioned before, change your roommates, meal plans, break housing, um, add dining dollars, all of those different pieces, but you'll need to make those um, leading up to July 1st. If you have any issues with your EID, so your username and your password, make sure to contact the K-State IT Help Desk. Their contact information is listed there. Housing and Dining Services staff aren't able to reset passwords for you, so you'll need to get in contact with them if that's something you need to do. And there are two very important resources that I wanted to highlight, the first being the Student Access Center. So we work with the Student Access Center to provide reasonable accommodations to persons with disabilities. I've provided the QR code there to the right of the Student Access Center and you can scan that and go to their website to uh, look up more information about what they're able to provide for you, as well as look at the necessary forms and documentations that you need to submit to the Student Access Center so that we can then work to provide that accommodation for you if that's something that you're interested in doing. And that is their email address, so you can connect with them um, through that as well. But it, they will be a good advocate and important resource important resource for you in working with us um, to make uh, the accommodations that you need. And then the second is the LGBT Resource Center. Stephanie mentioned that if you are a student who identifies um, as a transgender or non-binary, we work closely with the LGBT Resource Center to uh, work and identify housing options for you based on what your preference and comfortability is. So it will be helpful to contact the resource center and talk with us to discuss what those options are again the qr code goes to their website so you can find additional information and information about what the resource center provides and then you can connect with them via that email as well important dates and timelines to consider as we move um, through the summer. So first of all, a lot of this is going to be communicated to you through the uh, Office of Recruitment and Admissions, but just wanted to make you aware of these dates moving forward. So new student orientation um, it goes throughout the summer. The first piece of that involves academic advising, and you'll need to schedule a virtual meeting with either your staff or faculty advisor to enroll in your fall classes. For first year students, those Advising appointments happen between June 7th and the 23rd. For transfer students, those will begin next week, April, and happen April 20, 18th through the 20th, June 6th, and June 24th. So if you haven't already signed up for that virtual meeting, please make sure you do so. If you have questions, contact the Office of Recruitment and Admission um, or your advisor to do that. Also in June, new student orientation will have uh, their K-State ready time frame that, that will offer in-person programming at the end of June to complete various things with the university. There will be more information coming out about that. We don't know what that will look like exactly at this point in time. In July, again, reiterating July 1st is the last day to make changes in your resident portal. So make sure that you do that. Um, up until that time. And July 15th is when your university bill will become available. There have been many questions that have come through the, uh, the chat and with individuals asking if when you select your room, are you going to have to pay at that time? No, your, your bill will be created, which will outline the charges for tuition and fees, as well as room and board. So board is your meal plan. So everything will be included in that bill at that time, as long as any, as well as any financial aid that you may be receiving. And you'll be able to make that payment at that time for the full semester. For August, 
specifically for housing, note that early move-in is from August 14th through the 16th, so that's a Sunday through a Tuesday. If you would like to move in early, it is a $50 per day charge that includes the charges for the, me the room as well as meals, so the dining centers will be open during that time. Regular move-in uh, with no additional charges begins August 17th through the 21st. Move-in information, as I mentioned, is going to be sent to your K-State email. That's going to happen in early July. It will include information about how to sign up for both your check-in and move-in appointment. And then August 18th will be the final piece of that new student orientation all, th all the way through the 21st. So there will be in-person programming and orientation leaders will connect with you over the summer for more information about that. And August 22nd will begin your first day of fall classes. As you're looking towards the fall semester and deciding if you want to work on campus, we do want to highlight the jobs, the student positions that are available in our dining centers. So those include um, positions in customer service, food production, uh, the dishroom and custodial positions, as well as the bakery. And if you go to this QR code, you can find more information about the benefits of working on campus and you can apply there. Um, it's a really great work opportunity for you and you can look for something that would be close to the um, building in the community that you select your room in so that it's an easy commute to work. And wanted to highlight as well we partner with a company called OCM. If you are interested in purchasing bedding or bath um, materials, decor, any um, materials for organizational purposes and carpets, you can visit OCM.com slash KST and any orders that you place through them, OCM donates a portion towards our Association of Residence Halls, which then goes back to programming for students in the halls. And so it's a great opportunity to be able to purchase some of those items ahead of time, but also be able to give back to the community as well. So also stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We're doing a social media campaign every week featuring one or two of our halls to give you some more insight into what it's like living in those communities. So as you're building those lists of places that you want to live um, or may be available for you for room selection, I encourage you to check that out so that you can get a little bit more of that insight. And just before we open up to the last few minutes for uh, Q&A, please reach out to us if you have questions or concerns. This is our main um, phone line, as well as our email address. And you can always visit our website for more information. We are here to help you. We wanna make sure that you are successful in plan finding a place here on campus. So reach out at any time. So we have about three minutes left, so we may try to answer any common questions that have coming, been coming through the chat um, as we try to wrap up. One question that I, uh, that it looked like was coming in quite um, frequently that I apologize, I meant to show during the live demo was how to add or change or take away a CAT community. Um, and so you would do that. Let me, let me just share my screen so I can show it because th there was, quite a few questions about it. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen here because it was the last scenario I was showing. Um, oh, I have to delete this from the phone. Sorry. Um, I'm gonna show you, Kathy, can you go in and delete my room assignment for HDS test two female, please? And then I will show them how, where to go to remove the cat community. Um, it's thinking. <laughs> um, so if you want to remove or change your CAT community, you can always email us at housing at ksu.edu or email k, uh, state first at ksu.edu um, with questions or concerns about that. And we're happy to do that. The other way to do it is to go to the edit contract. And then there's the CAT community options. This only shows for first year students that are eligible for CAT community. So you would click there. And then you can see that I have had preference, the hope and resilience through fandom CAT community. Um, if I wanted to change that or take that CAT community away, all I would do is go to no, 
and then I would save changes. And then that's gonna alert our office that you are taking away that CAC community. I will then, um, I've, and that person, I, I, I say, we will, I will um, email you to confirm that we have received that notification and I will, um, I will adjust your room selection date and time to only to be um, considered versus for the whatever, um, either the CAC community and your um, contract date or just your contract date. Um, so you will get an email update for that. All right, well, it looks like um, we are at the end here. And so any, uh, any other questions that we want to answer live? Steph, so there are a lot of questions on how fast do four person suites fill up, um, three person suites, et cetera. Can you talk about just, it depends on, um, what people choose and the, talk about the inventory button again. Yes, so you'll be able to look at the inventory button um, when you go on um, on April 25th, you'll be able to see. Um, I will say our suite style options are one of our more popular options. Um, we've seen those go quickly um, the last few years. So make sure that your roommate with the earliest um, selection date and time um, goes in and, and selects the room um, because they'll have the best chance. If you do not get the room choice that you wanted, like Whitney said, we have all of these, have some backup plans, go ahead and select your second or third choice and then come back and check um, because there are changes that are made throughout the summer. And so there could be other rooms um, where students are deciding to change to a different room or maybe they dropped a CAC community or they decided to go to a different university or something like that. Um, so there are changes that happen throughout the summer. Um, and so just keep checking back for that. And I did just want to uh, talk about how new student orientation includes academic advising, K-State ready, and then the in-person um, piece that is Oct uh, August 18th through the 21st. So that's all considered part of the new student orientation experience, um, just so that you have that. But again, if there's more, information or questions that you have about that or want about that, um, you will want to visit the Office of Recruitment and Admissions or Admissions webpage to see um, more about that information. Um, as far as um, the roommate, um, it looks like people are asking, do both of my roommates have to go in and select? Um, so when you, if, as long as your roommates are confirmed, it's going to pull you into that room. So only one person in your group has to select the room. Uh, and it, that's as long as everybody's confirmed. So make sure that when you go onto your contract and look at that roommate preferences page, that everything is showing as confirmed and green light, essentially. Um, if you have questions about it, feel free to email or call us and we're happy to look through that. Um, I am also doing an audit as often as I can when we get close to the room selection times um, to see if there are people that are unconfirmed, but sometimes I don't know if you haven't put your roommate on there. Um, so it makes sure that you are checking into that prior to your room selection date and time. We had a question about the any 14 meal plan. Yes, those 14 meals can be used any of those seven days, but you want to make sure that you spread it out so that you have availability for all seven days um, if you need to have available meals for that full time. So keep that in mind. I think we're just wrapping up a few more questions, um, a few more responses to questions in the chat. Um, but I think that wraps up essentially our room selection webinar for the, for the fall 2022 semester. So I wanna thank you all for joining us 
and uh, walking through this process with us. We're excited to welcome you onto campus and to continue communicating and working with you throughout the summer. So thank you for being here. Again, we are here as resources for you. So if you have questions or concerns, uh, feel free to follow up with us afterwards. You are welcome to contact us individually or use that main line. Um, and contact information that I provided. But again, thank you all for being here. We really appreciate you.